Asalaamu Alaikum, hello, and welcome back to this, your Two White Muslims <coughs> show. Just before the break, well, just before the break, we started talking about the rights of parents within Islam. The rights of parents within Islam. Parents, particularly mothers, go through many difficulties during the developmental stages of a, of a child's life until they become fully grown adults. Um, this is why mothers in Islam are held in incredibly high esteem. The difficulties that a mother goes through and the respect that should be accorded to her are highlighted within the Quran. And within that, Allah subhanahu wa says in one of the verses of the Quran, and we have enjoined upon man to his parents good treatment. His mother carried him with hardship and gave birth to him with hardship. And his gestation and weaning period is 30 months. And it continues, it's a long verse, and ends by saying, indeed, I have repented to you, and indeed, I am of the, I am of the Muslims, emphasizing the need to look after both uh, mother and father. And this is uh, greatly emphasized, not only in this verse, but many other verses as well, which we'll be talking about. And also the hadith of our beloved Prophet So all these things are usually reminders. And Allah says in the Quran, and remind for indeed the reminder benefits the believers. So these are the reminders once again. And we need to really look into it. Unfortunately, I have seen some young people do not care for their parents. Mm. If they have a battle or they have a challenging time between them, there's this disconnect. And that is really, really sad. Sometimes we should be forgiving mm -hmm. if they are wrong. Sometimes we need to be compassionate when they are uh, sometimes not able to remember things. We should be patient. And this is what our deen teaches. So, mashallah, you know, it's so important that we take this, this subject very, very seriously. You know, this, this verse in the Quran um, that mentions both parents in mm -hmm. general, but then it goes into detail in regards to our mothers because our mothers face challenges that fathers simply don't mm, you know the command to treat parents with kindness means to shower them with love affection and piety on them both in words and deeds and actions towards them you know um, it, 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 spe it specifies mothers yeah mm. now you know I look at my mother and I look at my mother's life I am one of five siblings so my mum had five children mm. we were all boys <laughs> so my mum had five boys to bring oh, up and yeah. put up with can you imagine was it a quiet household it was she we gave her such an <laughs> easy life <laughs> <laughs> such an easy life and we, we were never a, a, a bit of trouble i'm sure mm. and she you know she she never had any stories of any yeah. wrongdoings or anything but you know it's so, so important that we pay heed to this verse in the Qur'an yeah. and the numerous hadith that our beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, gave to us regarding um, the, the rights of parents and regarding the treatment of parents. And you're right, of course, in what you say. There are some children that, that we all see have very little mm. outward respect towards <coughs> their parents. Mm. Now, I understand that there are certain phases of, of, uh, of growing up, mm -hmm. and when you get to certain phases, hormones start. Yes. And it's a difficult time. <coughs> it is. And, you know, the, the, there is a strain on the relationship between a child yeah. and a parent at Absolutely. that time. Yep. But with love and care and affection from both sides, these mm. things can be, uh, you know, can be, 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 be made right. And it mm. is so, so important that they are. Yes. Because let me tell you, having lost both of my parents, mm. that there is nothing that can replace them, mm. nothing. And having said that, there needs to be a balance from both sides, mm -hmm. but here the emphasis is greater on the children. Yes. Mm. Adult children who need to be extra patient, uh, super patient, and be careful about how they deal with them. Mm. Yes. Unless they are going against the teachings of Allah subhanahu yeah. wa ta'ala, then obviously you are in the right to not <coughs> obey them, but otherwise, in normal circumstances, you obey your parents. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, we, we should treat parents with respect under all circumstances. Mm -hmm. And as you rightly say, Corsa, we should obey them unless, unless they're asking us to do something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. Mm -hmm. But we should care for them in old age as they cared for us as a child and give priority to their orders over voluntary acts of worship. Approach parents with tender humility and mercy. Don't raise your voice above theirs. Don't call them by their names. You know, be patient with them and never harm them verbally or physically. 
The Quran further emphasises the struggles that a mother withstands to highlight the need for one to reciprocate their parents' sacrifice for them. It states, We have enjoined man concerning his parents. His mother carried him through weakness upon weakness, and his weaning takes two years. Give thanks to me and your parents. To me is the return. This is the Quran, chapter 31, verse 14. And um, there are many, many verses like this in the mm. Quran. One specific verse where Allah Ta'ala mentions servitude to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mm. is immediately followed by the command of being kind to parents. Mm. So um, we should be commanding, co co fulfilling the commandments of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and then added to that is be, be, be mindful of your parents and fulfill the commandments of your parents. Mm. One, of the, one of the such words is where Allah says, worship Allah and do not ascribe any partners to him. That's the most important part, you know, uh, uh, Tawheed basically. <coughs> and then he goes on to say, and be good to parents. Mm. So after Allah saying, worship Allah, and do not ascribe any partners, Allah mm. says, and be good to parents. Mm. Chapter 4, verse 36. Wow. And so, so important, in, in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and your Lord has decreed mm. that you do not worship anyone except him and to parents you should give good treatment whether one or both of them reach old age mm. while you you're you're with them say not to them so much as uff do not repel them but speak to them a noble word and lower to them the wing of humility out of mercy and say my lord have mercy upon them as they brought me up when I was small. Mm. This is the Quran, chapter 17, verses 23 to 24. Mm. So just imagine, this is what Allah is saying. Yes. Do not say as much as uf mm -hmm. to your parents and do not repel them, but speak to them a noble word. Yeah. Allah is commanding the, 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 the children, mm. uh, parents, just imagine. Yeah. So Allah is saying this. So how serious this is? We should take that, take note of that. Yes. Uh, and these verses of the Quran, and especially what you were saying, Corsa, uh, indicate that after worshiping Allah alone and not ascribing any partners to Him, our good conduct to parents is the next most important duty for a Muslim. Wow! One hadith where mothers in Islam are highly regarded, even more than fathers, is where Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, reported. A person came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, who among, is, or who among people is most deserving of my fine treatment? And he, peace be upon him, said, your mother. He again asked, and who next? Your mother. The prophet, peace be upon him, replied again. He asked, and then, who next? He, peace be upon him, said again, your mother. So again he asked, then who? Thereupon, he, peace be upon him, said, your father. This is recorded in both Bukhari and Muslim. So just imagine, subhanAllah, the importance of the mother over the father is highlighted in this hadith by repeating your mother three times and mm. then your father, the fourth time, in response to the man's question, showing the high status of the mother in Islam. When I deliver talks to the non-Muslims, um, where many people believe that in Islam, Muslim women are treated subserviently. Mm. And when I talk to them about the status of the mother, the state of the wife, the yeah. status of the uh, daughter mm. and, the, and the status of, of the sister, mm. uh, then they realize this, uh, the high status that, that women have and the honor and the respect that they have. And when I mention this, this, uh, this hadith, they're really impressed uh, with this. And just imagine, I mean, I heard, I think, Zaki Naik saying that uh, she gets the gold price, the mother gets the gold yeah. price, she gets the silver price, mm. she gets the bronze price, the father will have to stick to with the consolation price. Yes. But thanks for taking part. Thanks for taking <laughs> Thank part. Thanks for taking part, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but having said that, you know, it doesn't mean that you <coughs> deny your, your father. Absolutely. Equally, yes. you know, the father mm. is the door to Jannah, our beloved yeah. Prophet Sallallahu said. So, you know, it's just that the, the emphasis was on the mother mm. because of the fact that the way that the mother has go, go through trials and difficulties t during childbirth. Mm. It was uh, also narrated in a, a yet another hadith that, uh, that uh, Jahim, radiallahu anhu, came to the beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, O Messenger of Allah, I want to go out and fight in Jihad, and I've come to ask your advice. Mm -hmm. He, peace be upon him, said, Do you have a mother? And he said, Yes. 
he peace be upon him said, then stay with her, for paradise is beneath her feet. Mm. And this is uh, recorded in Ahmed. Mm. And at this point, I'll just interject uh, because we have a call waiting. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, wa alaikum salam, Janaid and Yusuf and Kossar. <laughs> How is it? Wa alaikum salam. Listening to your uh, program, again, you're talking very good, uh, sensible things. Mashallah, thank you. The thing is, you know, one of the great things of life, if you, I was in Turkey just four weeks ago with my wife. Mm -hmm. We went to the, you know, the various places around Turkey. One was called Ephesus. It's one of those ancient cities mm -hmm. from the Greek times. Yes. yes. Now, if you read the, 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 the most famous story was the Trojan, the Trojans. Yep. And the Greek, the Greek was the, the ultimate hero of Greek was Achilles. Mm -hmm. Now Achilles' mother, she was worried about her son being killed or badly injured by spear or arrow. So she, she is told by this elderly person, told by some people to take him to this elderly person who will tell her how to protect her son, mm -hmm. her infant son. So she goes and sees this, what we call a buzurg in our culture, mm -hmm. the one who's got knowledge. And he told her, he says, dip your, go and dip your child into, 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 a, into a, a river and, and he will Make sure that his skin is not, uh, skin is washed with the water. Mm -hmm. And so she goes and she holds him. And then she realizes, you know, she's holding her by the armpits, you know. The, and she dips him into this river, River Styx. And human nature since then, since that, everywhere. The water touched his skin. He was not pierced by any arrow or spear. Mm -hmm. And this is the weakest point was the Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. Up to today, we humans are but the Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. And we must listen to that mother, that mother who dips her son so that he is protected. Mm -hmm. And this is what is the immortality of every mother. You look at it, you claim, how many mothers, how many mothers in Yemen, how many mothers in the Muslim world who are being killed at this very moment? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So as the Sheikh says, mm. you know, looking after your mother, caring for her, mm -hmm. respecting her, staying by her side, has in fact, you know, the, the, the same value in accordance with this hadith, mm -hmm. has the same value as someone who went out for jihad mm. and died in wow. the cause of Allah. Yes. I mean, yes. such high status as a mother in Islam, subhanAllah. Amazing. Wow. And all of these Quranic verses and sayings of the beloved Prophet, peace be upon him, well, they demonstrate the extraordinary worth of mothers in Islam. If someone is rude and disrespectful towards their parents or hurts them by saying insulting remarks or causing them grief or misery in any way, shape or form, then he shall severely be dealt with by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. As we can see from this hadith, and this hadith makes it very clear, once someone asked the beloved prophet, peace be upon him, what right do parents have over their children? He answered, they are your heaven and hell. And this is Ibn Majah that recorded this. Therefore, if you treat them well, it could be your ticket to paradise, your ticket to Jannah. But treat them badly, and it could be a means to enter the hellfire. Wow. Now, this is a very, very serious hadith of the Prophet. Mm -hmm. Your parents could be paradise, or they could be hell. Mm. That means if you do not treat your parents well, 
it could be hellfire. Mm. And if you do treat your parents well, they could be Jannah for you. SubhanAllah. You know, Allah, Allah Ta'ala has made it clear through our beloved Prophet Sallallahu And this is recorded in Ibn Majah, one of the, uh, the, the, the authentic hadiths, you know, the mm. six sitta hadiths. You know, our duties to our parents extend even after their death. One of the best ways to honor our parents when they are gone is by being kind to their friends. Because our beloved Prophet said, the best act of righteousness is that a man should maintain good relationships with his father's loved ones. And that's recorded in Muslim. Mm. So just imagine, if your parents have passed away, who are the, who are the, who are the friends? and have good companionship with them mm. because this is something that is also very positive. Mm. I was uh, speaking to an old colleague of mine and mm. this old colleague was describing a meeting in which he had human resources in the, in right. the, in mm. the yeah. room mm. and they were talking about abuse. Mm. They were talking about the subject of abuse which mm. is a very serious yes. subject. Yep. Yeah. And, and he, he asked, well, okay, so, so when does ill treatment become abuse? Mm. And they decided to go around the table with this and get people's opinions. Mm -hmm. You know, at what stage does ill treatment become abuse? Yeah. yeah, and none of them got even close to the right answer. Mm -hmm. But the HR director at that point said, the time at which ill treatment becomes abuse is when the person that it is aimed at says so. Oh. Mm. Think about that. Just think about this. Yeah. Because you may be venting, yeah. you may be just arguing, yeah. you may be just having a difficult day, yeah. but if you go at somebody for any reason and in any matter, it could soon be seen by them as you are being abusive. Yeah. Mm. Now, watch this hadith that Kosa has just said. Mm. Yeah, because, uh, sorry, uh, your, <laughs> Janae just, mm. just said, mm. It, your parents can be your heaven. Yes. Your parents can be your hell. Yep. And if you const constantly argue with your parents or give them a difficult time mm. or say that you're dissatisfied or say that you want more and you want this and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. We've heard it all before. You know, if you continually do that, then you may well be paving your way to the hellfire. Mm. So be very, very careful. Mm. And it's not up to you to determine what, at what point at what level, yeah. that is. Yeah. You, 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 get, you, you understand? Yep. It's yeah, yeah, never absolutely. up to you to determine that. And this is the reason it why is up to the person that you are aiming it at yep. to determine what and how they feel. Yes. And and this is the reason that. why be very careful. Mm. you yeah. conceptualize your words before you speak them. Yes. Yes. What impact will they have? And this is the reason why our beloved Professor specifically said, control your tongue. Mm. Control your tongue. It could be, you know, something that might take you to hellfire. Yeah. Not only with your parents, but for, for, for everybody that you deal with. But particularly with parents. Be kind, be, 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 be soft-hearted and also use soft words. Mm. You use your tonality appropriately. Yeah. Because that has an impact on them. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Extraordinary. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, placed kindness and respect towards parents uh, just after the prayers being offered on time. Mm. You know, yeah, this is how important amazing. this is. Think how important is this? Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anhu uh, said, I asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, which deed is most liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And he said, prayer offered on time. And mm. I asked, then what? And he, peace be upon him, said, kindness and respect towards parents. And this is recorded in Bukhari. Wow. You know, this is... <coughs> that. <laughs> you know, what, what are the five pillars of Islam? Mm. What are we supposed to do? Well, first of all, we're supposed to believe. Yep. Secondly, we, we are to establish prayer. Yep. Prayer. That's yep. the second. The second of the five pillars of Islam is to yeah, establish absolutely. prayer. Uh, when are we supposed to pray? Five times, a day. five times a day. Are we supposed to pray them all together at the end of the day? <laughs> because we, we, no. Uh, to save them up, Dad, to save them up. <laughs> no, you're not. You're supposed to pray them at yeah. their appointed time. Absolutely. Yep. And if you do that, that is the second pillar of Islam. Yes. Sorted. Yep. Yeah, you are done. Yes. And, and then associated with that. After your parents wow. and being kind to them and respectful towards them yeah. is just as important as that. Come on. Just the goodness. Subhanallah. You know, I love this subject. Yeah. I'm very passionate about this yeah. subject. I think we all are, and yep. so are our viewers, I yes, would hope. Yes, uh, we can see. So we're going to come back to this 
very shortly after this break. Inshallah. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.